What up y'all, this is Sir Cruz. I know it's been a long time since I made a video, but I can but I can't explain. See, I'm getting twisted. See, it's been too long, but um first off, every time I get ready to make a video, it's always something. Like just before this video, you know, I'm looking for another lens to put on the camera, right? And it's like <laughs> I'm digging in the in the drawer when I step back a little bit because I got my setup right here in my room. I step back, light fell and that's it right there. It's shattered everywhere. I'm like, oh my goodness. Cause like the lighting not that good. The lighting coming off the ceiling fan is not it's not ideal. So shattered everywhere. So I was like, damn. Like every time I get ready to make a video, since January, every time I get ready to make a video, it's always something. Um back in January, February, March, April, around that time, my hair started getting real light. I don't know what was going on. Like I don't know if it was my diet or what, but my hair started getting light right here and it's like it was getting light and then it grow back in and then go to another section to get light and then my hair started turning gray like I, I'm like what is going on so I was like okay went to the doctor one night got a MRI and, you know I had a little t I got a tumor on my brain but it's not deadly it's like it's, it's real small it's not it's not deadly or it's not you know nothing to be scared about but still it's there and I thought that had something to do with it and it wasn't it just you know I'm guessing it was my diet so I got back in the gym you know started working out and taking protein and whatnot, you know, and it eventually, you know, it got better. So, you know, and then fast forward to July, you know, um, I became a vegan and then, you know, I got more toned and whatnot. I may, I maybe lost a little weight, but I got more shredded. And then um, we, I went to St. Louis in September and then I cheated that one day, you know, I cheated on my diet and then I became a vegetarian and I, w I never went back to, vet I never went back to vegan. So it was like, <laughs> You know, my metabolism so fast, you know, and I never went back, but enough of all of that. Since January, there's been too much going on, but I'm making a video now. I hope y'all appreciate that and whatnot, but y'all know what I'm about to get ready to talk about. Y'all already know what I do, how to get waves, you know, an updated version 2017, end of 2017 version, and um, here we go. I ain't doing all that editing, you know, I'm not doing all that extra, you know. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. It ain't nothing. I hope it don't come off as cocky or none, cause y'all know me. Y'all know I'm not cocky. But be quiet. Let me be quiet. Get to it. Um. Okay. I just got some. I got some random things on my list. Oh, that's too bright. But um. As far as ways now, how do you get ways? A lot of people ask me that. No matter where I go, everywhere I go, how do you get your ways like that? What they're asking is, how do I get my ways the way they are? But it's a it's an illusion because of the texture. The texture is what like it boosts the waves up by like a hundred percent so having a good texture of hair is what makes your waves look that much more better you know because more people are amazed by a silkier hair texture than the coarse hair texture you know i mean even with coarse hair people can be like damn how you get your hair like that and you got rough hair it's possible and it, for anybody it's possible to get waves you just got to put in work but in general how do you get waves the main thing is brushing everybody know that everybody know brushing is what gets you waves i hope everybody know but for the people that don't know brushing is what gets you waves and not the product don't the product assists in the process of getting them but they don't help you get waves you know um let um, me see jeezy i saw a uh, um, little percentage thing he said 80 percent brushing 20 percent products and that's true getting waves is 80 percent brushing 20% products and that's very true can't deny that most of your pro most of the waving process is brushing so that's that as far as do-rags um, I would suggest a silky do-rag because your hair will maintain moisture better with a silky do-rag cut cut hold up all right I'm back I don't know what I was talking about and um, when I edit this, I'm not gonna look back at it either. So I'm gonna try to leave off where I think I left off at. Um, I think I was talking about do rags or something. But um, as far as do rags go, I would say get you a silky do rag. I, I was I would prefer a silky do rag over a cotton because um, in my experimentation, cotton do rags suck the moisture out of my hair. The do the cotton don't need moisturization. My hair does. So that's why I prefer. I would prefer just a regular, um, as you can see, a silky, a regular silky do rag. So the moisture will be better retained in your hair or scalp 
if you use a silk do-rag. That's just during my experimentation. I don't know with other people how it may work. I can't speak on their hair texture and how their hair reacts to a do-rag. But for me, I would suggest people with my hair texture to use a silky do-rag. And um, as far another thing with the do-rags now, this is the thing you have to remember. Don't put, do not put a stocking cap on as your primary layer of compression. I say this a lot. I've said this a lot in the past. Put your silkiest form of compression on first, which shall be your silky do-rag. Put this on first so your hair can be as slick as possible and, re and retain as much moisture as possible. Stocking caps or wave caps should only be secondary and third levels of compression. It should never be your primary. A stocking cap is bound to leave a line around your head. This bound to leave a line around your head. That's why I do not do that. Some people put on do-rags. People I see nowadays in 2017, they still have do-rag lines. It'd be elite waivers too. Like what's going on? Like why do y'all have a do-rag? Why do y'all have a do-rag line? So this is what you do. That's the thing. When you put it on like that, that's the thing I do. I don't tie my do-rag that tight. You know, it's just like tying your shoe too tight. If you tie, oh, let me see, if it's, is it recording? Oh, my bad. If you tie your shoe too tight, your feet gonna hurt. So, that's the thing I do. I usually tie it first in the back, but whatever, you know. I usually tie it first in the back, blah, blah, blah. I ain't doing all that, but <laughs> I usually tie it and then I put the boo-boo cap on over it. You know, and then if you need to, depending on the length of your hair, you put on another boo-boo cap you know, or whatever other form of compression that you have. But um, this is what I do, like this. And there's no line when I take it off, you know. I make sure I keep it like right here at the hairline, as you can see. See, you don't see my hairline, that's where you leave it at, right there. Like right where your hairline started, you don't wanna bring it down here. And this covering this up right here, this is what you gotta pay attention to. You don't wanna bring this over this, and it's, it's pressing down on this line on the do-rag. That's how you gonna get that line right there. I'm sure you don't want that. You don't want to be going to school and work with a line on your head. So you'll be looking crazy. So keep it right there. That's where you should keep it at. Your forehead don't need compression. You ain't got no waves on your forehead. So you know what I'm saying, right? So that's where it should go at. It should stop right there and that's it. And in the back, you know, as you can see, I, un I will untie it and it's, it's free. It's free to move, you know? So that's how I do it when I sleep with my do-rag on overnight. I do it like that. Wake up in the morning, I don't have no lines on my head. So, as simple as that, you know. Then when you take it off, it's simple. Your hair is not being bothered, you know, and it's not being tampered with. If you put a stocking cap on or something, see, look, just pay attention, look. When I take this off like this, my hair ain't stick up. Opposed to, if I put this on, it's too much moving I gotta do to get this off my big head. So, I do that, put it on, like, uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna mess my hair up. And I, it's not gonna be looking a damn mess. Like, ooh, it ain't gonna look like that, you know, but it's gonna it's gonna knock it off, you know, opposed to just having a silky do-rag on and that's it. So what's next on my list? What else? How long should it take to get waves? That all depends on, first, how much hair you have. Second, how much work you putting in. If you have a zero, if you got your hair cut to a zero, that ain't, if that ain't your length and what you need for your hair to start curling, you're not gonna get waves. So most people generally need to start with a one to one and a half for their hair to start waving up. For some people, it may be two. For people with straighter and silkier hair textures, they need their hair may need to um, be cut down to a two, two and a half. It can start at a one and a half to a two, but generally it's one and a half to a three. That's what people with silkier hair textures. Some, you know, it's a lot of um, it's, it's a lot of white guys that try to get waves, or even mixed, or Mexican, or whatever. They start, they be getting a cut to a one, and that's too low. They hair, you know, their hair is too straight. It's not gonna happen. You are gonna have to wait till your hair get to a three for your hair to start waving up. So it's basically pointless for you even be brushing. You can start, but it's like, it, it, to me, it's pointless. I learned that a while ago, you know, it's pointless if you ain't got no hair. You brushing your hair and you ain't even at your curl length yet. So it ain't gonna wave up. So it's like you wasting your time. So that's just like working out, you know, you working out hard, but you eating little. So you burning more calories 
than you're eating. You're burning more calories than you're consuming. So you're gonna lose weight. It's the same with waves. You brushing and you ain't at your hair length in which your hair will grow. I mean you ain't the hair you ain't the you not at the hair length in which your hair will wave up. It's pointless. You just brushing your hair just to be brushing it. Just just wasting energy, you know. So that's just how I look at it. Um what products? What products? This is another common question. Um it all depends on you, your personal preference, and your hair texture. Personal preference, it can go for smell, um, price. It's a lot of things. Um, with the smell, I don't know. You might not want a, a product that smells fruity. I don't mind a, a product that smells like that. I like for my hair to smell good. I don't want my hair smelling like like some um, beeswax or something. I don't want my hair smelling like that. I, I would prefer it to smell like strawberries. or You can call it gay all you want to. I don't care. I'm not bothered by people's opinions. but. It's like I said, it's all personal preference. How you want your hair to smell, you know, uh, price, if you can afford it, if it's in your budget. You know, all of these factors factor into um, what products that you get, you know. So, um, let me break it down some more. Now, more, you have moisturizers and you have pomades and you have gel. A gel is just to lay down some edges or something. A gel, I wouldn't use gel for my entire head. I used to do that back in like... 09, 2010, I used to use gel, but they used to flake my hair up bad. Don't do that. Don't use gel for your entire hair. Use it for like edges or something, but that's it. You know, um, pomade. Pomade is similar to gel, but it's better. Um, you can use a pomade like 360 Style Murray's, um, Dax. New now, it's a whole lot of different um, pomades that's out there on the market that you can use. I don't use them, but people with different hair textures may need to use them because it's harder for their hair to lay down. It's harder to train their hair. That's the things you need to think about as well um, as far as products. Now, for me, I don't, like I said, I don't use that. I don't need to. My hair is trained. I don't have to use that, but back in the day, I used to. I could use it now if I wanted to, but I like my hair to breathe. Like, I don't like nothing. This is the thing. It's a difference between. It's, it's so much. It's so much that you have to know. It's so much. Some people think, man, it's just simple. All you gotta do is break. I'm breaking it down for you. If you for those that really don't understand the things that I say in my videos, I'm gonna break it down some more. It's a difference between pomade hold and do rag hold. I'd rather my hair be laid from a do rag than from pomade and a do rag. See, with pomade, my hair feel matted. I don't like when my hair feel matted down. Like it just, it just feel like it's being suffocated. That's the, that's the type of thing I don't like. I like my hair to be laid from a do rag and oil. I only use natural hair oil such as argan oil or um, shea butter. Um, let me see, grape seed oil. Those are the type of oils that I use. That's that's the only thing I pretty much use. I don't use pomades or moisturizers. You know, the moisturizing creams. I don't use all of that. I just use strictly grape seed oil. Argan oil, shea butter, um, um, what's the other one? Apricot oil, um, and um, it's, a, it's a lot of different oils that I use, but I, I usually stick to argan oil and grapeseed oil. Those are my top two. And um, I use cocoa butter from time to time, you know. I use cocoa butter for, you know, for my skin. You can use cocoa butter for your hair too. It's good for moisturizing your hair as well. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a difference now. With pomade, pomade hold, I don't like that. It make my hair feel matted. And opposed to me using oil and just a do rag, my hair feels softer and it feels free. It don't feel like it's it's being pressed down. You know, it don't feel you know free like I said. But um, what else I have? Oh, when to wash? How often should you wash your hair? Washing your hair ties into how low you washing your hair coincides with your hair length because if you have a hair length in which your hair starts to wave up and you wash it too soon you will lose progress. Let's say your hair is finally at its curling length, okay? And then you want to wash it. You're going to lose progress. That's just how it go. If your hair is not trained and it's finally starting to wave up, you shouldn't be washing it. This is the thing. You should wash your hair once every two weeks. You have to give your hair enough time to form the wave, you know, because if your hair is just forming the wave and you wash it out, it's going to be gone. Then you'd be wondering like, damn, why am I ways? Why am I part? Why I'm losing progress? So, like I said, those two coincide with another. Washing your hair too soon and cutting it too soon. Wash it once every two weeks. Do it with the grain wash when you're in the beginning stages and when you're in the um, intermediate or the higher stages of your um, pattern. Um, 
that's when you can wash against the grain. I wash against the grain because it feels so much better cleaning my scalp. But with the grain wash, I don't feel relieved. It just feels like I'm just brushing, getting a brush that's in the end. But for the beginners, do not wash your hair so often. Do not get it cut often. Get your hair cut once every four weeks if you're in the beginning stages. Every four to eight weeks, get your hair cut. Every week and a half to two weeks, get a lineup or a trim or a taper. That's it. Keep that in mind. Do not forget that. Please don't because you're going to lose your progress and you're going to be mad at yourself. And then you're going to want to quit. So, you know, keep that in mind. When, uh, let me see, what makes your wave shine? What makes your wave shine is the ability of your hair to maintain moisture. That's the thing. My hair always looks shiny because my hair is not really using that much moisturization because it's healthy. So it only uses it as it needs it, you know. So that's how my hair works. That's how people would, um, I don't want to make it seem like it's a such thing as bad hair. I think I think it is, but I try not to say that because if you got a if you got hair a hair texture where you put a comb through and then the comb break, you can't say that's good hair. I'm sorry, but I'm, I don't want to offend nobody. But um, with my hair's texture, I can put some oil in it. I can spray some oil sheen in it, and it could be shining all day. My hair don't need you know my hair is moisturized, so it's only it's gonna only use it as it needs it. It's not gonna use it like oh I need I need I need it you know, so it's only gonna use it as it needs it opposed to a person with a hair texture that they can put some oil in there in another 30 minutes they had dry back out again they their hair sucking it up because it's is is you know it's like they're dehydrated so they the hair going to use more of it more often you know so as far as moisturizers go for somebody with my hair texture or my hair type let me see is it still recording okay somebody with my hair type you know you can use a moisturizer once every two days or once a day depending on what you feel like you need if your hair feels dry to you you can use it every day if you want to but i don't do that i don't do i i um i use like i said i use a, i use grapeseed oil once every two days that's it that's all i need for my hair texture along with that silky do-rag that's it i'm do-ragged up most of the day unless i leave the house that's it on the weekend i may be do-ragged all day during the week do-ragged all day until i leave out go to work or whatever i'm doing you know so that's the thing. If somebody with a coarser hair texture, like I said, you may need to use your moisturizer every day. Somebody with coarse hair, you may need to use pomade every day. But I wouldn't suggest that because it will clog up your pores. You know, you don't want your all of that clogged up in your head. I'm telling you, because your hair not gonna be able to breathe, and when you can't breathe, it ain't gonna grow. And when it don't grow, you ain't gonna progress. And when you don't progress, you're gonna feel like you ain't getting nowhere. And when you ain't getting nowhere, you're gonna wanna quit. And when you want to quit, you're going to end up going to something else. And you ain't going to have waves no more. So that's what you have to keep in mind with trying to get waves. It's, it's a lot of different things you have to keep in mind. Now with the brushes. Now, I can put this down. I'm going. On, I'm freestyling now. I don't need to look at the script. I got, I got back in the mood now. So I'm, I'm, I can go. But um, with, the, with the brushes, another breakdown you need to know. You need a soft brush. You need a medium. And you need a hard. No, erase that. You don't need a soft. That's personal preference. People with a coarser hair texture, a soft brush ain't doing nothing. So throw that out the window. You need a medium brush. Don't mean to put the middle finger up. You need a medium brush and you need a hard brush. Medium brush from when your hair is at a 1.5 to 2. Hard brush. Is it recording? Oh my God. It's about to cut off. Take. I got to cut. Cut again. I need to get some more memory on my memory card. I need to cut one more time. My bad. All right, y'all. Last time. But um, as I was saying about the brushes. Now let me break it down one more time real quick. Now, people in general, I don't think a soft brush is needed, but this is the thing. A soft brush is only needed for people with, a soft brush can only be used by people with like a silkier slash straight hair texture, you know, just for general use and also as a polish. Like if you're using like a mist or oil on your head, you just want to, you know, polish it, but you don't want to get a deep brush session in. You just want to make sure that oil is, um evenly distributed on your hair and you know so you can get that good shine that's when you can use a soft brush now for people with like coarser hair a soft brush session is not really doing nothing unless your hair is very low like very low but other than that general use for a person with coarser hair with a soft brush is not really going to do anything but unless you just brush it for hours and hours that's the only way now as far as me as far as i go a soft brush session is decent you know it's decent but you know, it ain't really doing much for me either. It's like, I mean, my progress is set. Just me using a soft brush now is only just for polishing. You know, I, I spray a mist in, 
I don't want to get deep down on my scalp. I just want to brush it, you know, just to give it that little shine. When you, you know, when you get a hard or medium brush, it's going to lift your hair up off the scalp. And, you know, it's going to make your hair stick up a little bit. Now, with a soft brush, for me, it don't do that. I just use a soft brush. I, sli I lightly graze across my hair, you know, to make sure the oil is on there to give me that perfect shine. So, that's that. I mean, what's another thing with waving? It's combing. People ask, you know, how do you get your connections? You, you get your connections by woofing your hair longer, which is growing your hair out for an extended amount of time. Everybody should know what woofing is by now. And, you know, as far as getting your connections right, you need to woof and you need to comb. Combing helps with aligning your hair. Now, in addition to comb, you need to make sure you're precisely brushing with your brush, whatever brush you may use it. No matter whatever brush you may be using, no matter if it's a soft, medium, or hard, you need to precisely brush. Because when you precisely brush, in addition to precisely comb, in addition to woof, that's how you get your connections right. You know, my connections are not all the way there. You know, I'm at the stage in my life and my wave career, whatever you want to call it. I'm not really concerned with the flawless connections. I don't really care about that. I don't, it's nothing for me to gain from it. And it's nothing for me to lose from it. I'm not the type to brag and want to brag and like, oh, oh, look at me. You know, I'm flawless. Like, that's not, I'm not that type. I've never been the type to brag on myself, you know. I let my actions and my appearance um, speak for myself. I don't need to do that. So, as far as I go now, I don't, I'm not concerned with all them connections. But for people that are, you know, people out there, there's ways killing mine, you know. But I don't, that's not my concern. But for people that are trying to learn... Combing, woofing, and growing your hair out is, is the key to getting your connections on point, you know. Woofing, you need to woof for as long as you can. But the general um, idea of woofing is four to eight weeks, you know, four to eight weeks. And if you real good, you can go that long, you can go to 12, you know. But I wouldn't suggest that long for a coarse hair person because their hair tends to be tougher. You know, it's tougher for it to lay down and it's harder for it to train when you, you know, when you have a coarse hair. When you have coarse hair, it's harder to manage your hair at longer weeks. You know, when you get to like week four and five and six, it's hard. I know, I, I've heard it a lot from people saying, you know, I can't do it no more. What am I going to do? You know, I want to cut my progress off of my hair. is is getting to a point where I can't manage it no more. And I completely understand that. So it's like, you know, you can get you some freehand trims every, you know, every week. You know, just comb it out and just, you know, slightly graze over it. But don't get the actual haircut. That's how you can make your woofing last longer, too. That's another tip. Comb your hair out. You know, if you want to do it at home, comb your hair out. And then the, just the little hairs that's sticking up. Graze across that with a steady hand. Don't do that if you got a shaky hand. You know, you can't you can't be freehand trimming. You know, freehand trim is without the guard on the clippers. So you can't do that if you ain't got a, a, a steel hand. So that's the thing. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it with waves in general. Like I said, you have to brush. Waving is purely brushing mainly brushing you know the products you know the products may give you a little a little boost here and there you know it may curl your hair up a little bit but generally speaking um you will not get waves if you're not brushing you have to remember that you know people are like oh that's another thing see it's so much it's so much it's another thing people are like oh well you know that's still a process them process waves yes this is a process yes it is a process but it's not a kit that's what you have to understand a lot of people be like man that ain't natural that's a process um, a natural process. Yes, it's natural. Like, that don't mean it ain't natural because I go through a process for it to um, get this way. You know, ain't nobody born with, with waves. Uh, uh, you know, ain't nobody born with perfect waves. Any Everything in life is a process, you know. It's a process to graduation in school, right? It's a process to fixing your food, right? You know, it's a process to... Life is a process itself. You know, everything is an evolutionary process. It ain't just... I, I, it ain't just like that. So just because it, my hair is processed, yes, yeah, processed naturally. You know, naturally, natural oils, natural processes. Putting a do rag on is not unnatural. That's just laying my hair down. That's just like saying putting a cover on is unnatural. Like what? The f what is that? Like that don't make sense. Like that. You see what I just said? That makes sense. That's how people sound when they say, "Oh, you put a do rag on at night. That ain't natural." That's very. Na All I'm doing is just a. Pro that's a. It's just a source of compression. How is that not natural? Like, my, my hair not naturally laid? Like, okay, that's what you mean? Okay, well, I guess so. But my hair is natural. The way, it, you know, for, for it to get this way, it may not have been, you know, naturally, you know, laid. Like, I mean, I, I need my hair to be laid at night. I don't want it to get messed up in my sleep. So that's what I'm saying. Like, 
Everything in life is a process. It ain't just, oh, well, you, you, uh, like, come on, I can't even get it out. Like, people kill me, you know, saying, like, oh, that's a pro it's process. Those process waves. Look at mine. This natural. All I used was brushing some water. Like, okay. Like, if, okay, this is the thing. You can use just brushing the water and don't, and, and water and don't use a do rag at night. Yeah, you can do that and your hair be laid. But you know what? Your hair has to be at a low level. You can't be six to eight weeks woofing being, you know, just brushing water and no do rag at night because you're going to look messed up. So that's the thing you have to remember for the haters and for everybody that think they know what they're talking about, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you can, you know, be a full natural, you know, and and not go to sleep with a do-rag on and just use a brush and water, but you need moisturization. Water is not going to give you all the moisturization your hair needs. Your hair needs keratin. Your hair needs biotin. Your hair needs vitamin A to, you know, get oxygen to the scalp. You know, your hair needs zinc. Your hair needs um, vitamin C. You need all of that good stuff, you know. So that's what I'm saying. You just can't go off of water. Water ain't got all that. So that's what people, you know, think they know what they're talking about, but they don't. So that's the thing. Y'all y'all may be right. You know, this is not a 100% natural process, but is my hair is natural. That's what you have to understand. So let me give y'all a close-up before I go. This is what they looking like. So, yeah, man, all the people talking about, oh, it ain't natural, you know, them waves ain't natural. My waves are natural. While the entire process may not be, I don't, I don't even know how to, pres I don't even know how to define that. Like, just because I wear a do-rag, that means my hair is not natural? I don't know what people mean by that. Like, I don't know. I have no idea. But my hair, indeed, is natural. You know, the process may not be, you know, a whole 100% natural until I get to the woofing stages, you know. My hair, you know, I'm, I, every night I use a do-rag. That's just, that's just a routine to me. Like, I like my hair to be laid at all times. Not one hair strand sticking up. That's just me. I like my hair to be laid and intact when I get up in the morning. I ain't got a brush. Like, I, this is another thing. When you get up in the morning and you brush, you don't brush your whole head. You get up in the morning, you just brush the edges and the tips. That's it. Brush right here. This, this, and this, this. Because most of the time when you sleep at night, you may, you know, toss and turn and, and what's messed up be the edge most likely you know unless you're a super wild sleeper but you know but this is what I'm looking like like I said I mean any more questions you got about ways or whatever hit me up in the inbox comment below follow me on Instagram at Real Sir Cruz we'll be looking like with the time we are nine minutes this video will be like 30 minutes I hope y'all enjoy it um and a message for everybody for those who are African American that's the thing I want to get out there real fast People want to blame, um, you know, white people for black people hating each other. That's that's very that's very logical to me. That's not a, a critical thing. Of if you if you believe that white people make us hate each other, that's stupid to me. You know, you are responsible for what you think about other people. You are responsible for how you view other people. Just because social media, all I see on social media is, is ignorant black people. I may see that. But when I when I come across a person, I don't judge them just off of what I've seen on social media. That's what people have to understand. You can't judge people by off what you see. You may see hoes all over Instagram, but just because you meet somebody off a dating website, that don't mean that they're a hoe too. That's what we have to understand in life. I, I I do that a lot. You know, even myself, I do that. You know, with people I've dated, I've automatically assumed and you know was prejudiced towards somebody. We can't do that. We can't blame, oh, white supremacy and, you know, social medias and what they, you know, what the white man showing us, you know. We, I'm tired of people blaming that. We, we, we responsible for that, not them. Just because, just because social media may show gay men kissing all day. Instagram could be hacked and they show gay men all day. That don't make me, that don't mean I'm going to turn gay tomorrow. That don't mean I'm going to start liking men tomorrow. So you feel when I'm, you feel my drift, you feel where I'm going with that? So we can't we can't blame what people you know we can't we we are responsible for ourselves we can't strong-minded critical thinkers we are responsible for ourselves other people might not understand what I'm talking about but for people that has a working brain people that know how to use logic and critical thinking skills we cannot blame other people for how we view other people you can't be, you can't blame prejudice on somebody else. Yeah, the, the white man may be in control of what we see on the internet. 
but it starts at home with the parents. The parents teach the kids, you know, respect people based off how they treat you. If they treat you like crap, you can't you can't let people treat you like crap. And you treat them with respect. If they smack you in the face, you can't stand there. You got to stand up for yourself at some point. So that's it's the same thing with, with this situation I'm talking about. We can't blame social media for how we view other people. We can't. I mean, I see, like I said, I see a lot of ignorance on social media with my with my people. A lot of black people. When I go out in public, I'm not automatically assuming that they that they're um, that they're ignorant. You know, until they give me a reason to believe that they are. So like if I if I go to Walmart, I see somebody black, I'm not like, gosh, he ignorant. I mean, key. I mean, I do look at people and I can tell. I have a gift. I have a. I have, I don't know how to describe it, but I have a gift where I can look at people and tell if they're ignorant or not. But I don't treat them that way. You know, long as you don't do nothing to me or touch me, we good. Like, but I can look at people and tell they're ignorant. I don't know how I can tell. Like, it's hard for me to describe, but. Like I said, we can't blame the white man for nothing. We responsible for ourselves. Don't blame nobody else. Don't blame nobody for your faults. Don't blame nobody for how you think. You're responsible for your way of thinking unless you're a weak-minded individual. That's how I feel. The, in the internet, the TV can show whatever they want to show about black people. I'm not the way those black people are on TV. And most of the black people watching now, you may not be like the ignorant people that they show on TV or, you know, however you want to categorize them. You may not be like them. But just because they show that on the internet, that don't mean that you're that way. So that's what we have to understand. We can't blame nobody else for that. We're responsible for our own thinking. If your brain works, you're not mentally unstable. You know, if you're a normal human being with a working brain, you will understand what I'm talking about. But if you don't, it is what it is. We are all subject to our own, own opinion. But black people in general, we need to stick together. We can't hate on one another that's another issue right there we can't blame white people for us hating each other I don't know where that came from I'm not about to get into all that but I have a strong mind the white people can make us hate each other all they want to that ain't making me hate my own people I don't care what they show on the internet they can show us killing each other day in and day out I still don't hate black people so y'all the white supremacists and whoever control the media whites Indians whoever control it I'm not phased by it. It's not going to make me hate black people. So it is what it is. Like I said, black people need to stick together. We need to stop walking past each other, mean mugging like we did something to each other. I don't know what that's about because I come in contact with a lot of people. I speak. They don't say a damn word to me and I don't know why we like that. Like I said, we, we are some, some of us are controlled by the media and what we see on media is what makes us think the way we think about each other and I hate that. I really hate that and I'm not I'm not like that but it's a lot of people it's a lot of people out there that's like that but this Sir Cruz my camera about to cut off once again I'm talking too much but I ain't made a video in a long time I hope y'all enjoyed it I hope I made sense to y'all I respect y'all I hope y'all respect me too much love follow me on Instagram at Real Sir Cruz share this video please I'm out